Good morning and welcome back to the Breakfast Club. You are still with me, Shah Shamshiri. And uh, on this terrific Tuesday, I promised you earlier, uh, just before the commercial break, we've got a special guest. We've got uh, Tina Malone from uh, the Embassy of the United States of uh, Welcome to our show today. Thank you very much for coming. Thank all you, right. sir. Um, first of all, I guess uh, the issue is that we, the, the one we'd like to talk about is uh, perhaps um, what's making the headlines today. The biggest news of all is about Osama being killed. Now, um, uh, being a representative uh, from the embassy, mm -hmm. maybe you could share with us, first of all, um, the main question we'd like to know now is what are the measures undertaken to counter you know, um, the, the security actually well, we're talking about security right now, that's the first issue mm -hmm. because um, some people they're a bit iffy about things, they're wondering now what, what's going to happen you know, because will there be uh, things uh, going on around uh, anywhere actually because we've seen uh, some reports from uh, the news wires, we've got some embassies taking different measures, you know, different countries have different reactions but for us here in Malaysia, you know, um, um, what are the security measures perhaps uh, being taken uh, by the embassy here? Well, this morning, or actually last night, your prime minister actually talked about stepping up police presence in, in uh, Malaysia. Mm -hmm. We're in close coordination with the Malaysian police and um, with officials with whom we've enjoyed very good collaboration in the past, and yes. that collaboration will continue. Okay. Um, in terms of, you know, how has security posture changed, mm -hmm. um, between yesterday and today, in KL, for the embassy, I would say not very much. Okay. Um, the State Department issued a global travel alert yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that travel alert basically um, talks to U.S. citizens and and sort of reminds them to remain vigilant. Okay. In light of the events that uh, occurred in Pakistan yesterday, however, um, what that means for business in KL here at the embassy, I mean... Things go on as usual. Right. It's All business right. as okay. usual. All right, um, okay, but uh, going back to this, this whole issue, okay, how about uh, our Muslim friends who are living in the States, um, do you think they're, they're, they'll be facing certain, you know, uh, prejudice, etc., things like that going on? Because um, as we know, the Muslim community in Malaysia, uh, is, uh, they've got different reactions, you know, some, some are pro, some are con, because it's very subjective, but in the States particularly, okay, the Muslims over there, uh, they've been living with this. It's been 10 years already. And from what I know, I've got Muslim friends over there. Things are going fine. They don't face much problems. Mm -hmm. Now, will this change after this, this particular event? You know, it's, a f it's not something that's going to particularly affect Muslims or non-Muslims. I mm -hmm. think that, that uh, this, this event means that the world is a safer place. Okay. Not only for the United States and the citizens of the United States, but for everyone around the world. Okay. For all peace-loving people, I think this signifies the end of a chapter okay all right now we move on um this is uh, also related actually we're talking about uh, the visas to get to the states mm -hmm. now before this um i mean i myself i know because my name my full name i have got i've got a muhammad right in front of it and mm -hmm. i had friends tell me oh you're gonna have a hard time trying to get a u.s visa shah because your name is muhammad you're a muslim so you know whether this is true maybe you could clarify you know now that um, this just happened, Osama bin Laden is, is, is dead and, and, and whether this will continue on, you know, for Malaysians, every time we want to travel abroad, you know, uh, particularly the Muslims, they're going to say you're going to have a hard time. So maybe you could uh, share with us sure. whether that's true or not. Sure. One thing I'd love to be able to share with you, Shah, is that um, it's an urban legend that it's difficult to get a U.S. visa. Okay. It's actually here in Malaysia very easy. Okay. Um, did you know that 95% of the people who apply for visas get them within several days? Okay, see, that's one thing so, people don't know, so no. we should mention that on air. Exactly. 95%. Yes. Okay, yes. all right. The other thing I think that I'd like to mention is that, especially for Muslims studying in the United States, mm -hmm. um, in the recent years we've experienced, you know, rising numbers of Muslim students in the U.S. coming from countries like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Oman, Turkey and Malaysia happen to be two mu pre predominantly Muslim countries that have a large number of students in the U.S., and we hope that that trend is going to continue. So this this is obviously not true when people say it is difficult to get a visa for the United States. You know, people just make things up, I suppose, because Tina just mentioned here 95 percent mm -hmm. actually. You know, and it just takes a few days to get the visa. All right. Um, how about uh, you know uh, the the actions and plans you think the U.S. government will implement now that you, you just mentioned earlier? For now, everything's business is fine as mm -hmm. usual. Mm -hmm. Okay, but um, uh, because we also know about traveling, you mentioned just now. For uh, the U.S. citizens who are traveling, okay, they're traveling abroad, they're 
told to remain vigilant. All right. How does that apply to other people who are not uh, not just American citizens? Because there are travel advisories for um, different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are, uh, um, like I said, I mentioned earlier, um, a Malaysian student. You know, you mentioned they're studying abroad and then they want to come back. Do you think they'll face problems or there'll be double standards, things like that going on, perhaps? Uh, you know, Shah, after 9/11, the U.S changed a lot of ways that it does uh, business, the way that we control our borders. Okay. Um, in an effort to make sure that 9-11 and this type of attack occur. never happens again. Okay. We tightened up systems for our visas. Mm -hmm. We uh, instituted the use of biometrics. The use of biometrics helps to make travel simpler, okay. easier, and safer for everybody. Um, we also stepped up international cooperation on counterterrorism. So what does this mean for travel? Nothing is going to change from you know yesterday to today because I think we've seen changes happening over the past ten years or so okay. where we've uh, improved our systems okay. and made our country safer but also safer for everyone who travels there. All right. So once again, good news. Okay, I'm telling all of you, if you want to go to the States, please do not believe the urban legend that it's difficult to get a visa. Well, I have to remind this because it's not true. All right. <laughs> and yeah, things are good actually. Just send out those good vibes. Now, what is America's vision for global peace? This is this is a general question actually. After all these things, the the everything which has happened, things we've read about in the papers, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, generally where where does uh, the United States stand? when we talk about uh, you know global peace you know that's a very interesting question and yeah. it's also a really tough question i know <laughs> you know but let me try to answer it yeah um, i think that president obama spoke on numerous occasions about his vision for peace and two occasions in particular stand out for me one was his speech in 2009 in from cairo when okay. he was speaking at al azhar okay and um, the second was when he accepted his nobel peace prize at the end of that same year mm -hmm. you know he talked about peace in terms of agreements between nations. He, right. he talked about it in terms of support for human rights. Okay. He talked about it in terms of investments in development and especially religious tolerance. Okay. But I think most importantly, he talked about expanding our, our moral imagination and also adhering to what he called the the uh, universal law of love. What okay. is that universal law of love? It's something that's reflected in all of the world's great religions, which is do unto others as you have them do unto you. Of course. And in a nutshell, I think that is probably what best s describes the U.S. vision for global peace. Very well put and very easy to understand for everyone. So I guess, I guess anywhere in the world, sometimes people misunderstand certain things, so they tend to interpret things differently. Mm. Okay, but. Here in, in Malaysia, at least we know things are going on fine. Everybody's getting along. So, and Tina has, has given us a very, very good clarification about everything. So once again, I'm reminding all our friends and viewers, all right, don't worry. It won't be difficult to get a visa if you are interested to go to the States, regardless whether you want to study or even for a holiday. So I'm not so worried now about being Muhammad Shahrizar here, okay? I, I'm going to look forward to my American visa. Uh, but for now, I'm afraid that's about all the time we have today. Thank you so much, Tina, You're for welcome. spending time with us this morning. Very good. Uh, we are going to take a short break because after this, our friend Fabian Narcis will be sharing the news headlines and then we'll be back on The Breakfast Club. Don't go away.